Okay guys, this is urgent. Today, we're gonna be diving into the legal whirlwind surrounding former President Donald Trump, who's at risk of losing significant assets after filing an appeal over a staggering $454 million judgment in his New York City civil fraud case. So Trump and his legal team are pulling out all the stops to overturn this monumental ruling, fearing the potential loss of a substantial portion of his wealth. With interest steadily accruing at $112,000 per day, the stakes could not be higher. Stay tuned as we Unpack the latest developments in this high stakes saga, including Letitia James' plan to seize Trump's assets, including his 40 Wall Street building, and the viral controversy surrounding the GoFundMe campaign from Elena Cardone, wife of real estate billionaire Grant Cardone. The GoFundMe in question has hit $1 million and is heading toward $1.3 million after 22.6 thousand donations were made. Stay tuned, guys. This is one video you do not want to miss out on. So, here's the latest on Trump's appeal on that $454 million dollar ruling against him. So check this out. So Anna, what Trump filed this morning and his co-defendants with him are two notices of appeal. One is at Judge Angoron's decision and order. That's that 92 page decision in which he found Trump and his co-defendants liable for six additional counts of fraud in their business dealings in the Trump organization over a period of almost a decade. He has also now appealed the judgment that was entered late last week. That judgment reduced the dollar amount, as you know, to $464 million and counting by the day with each additional day for added judgment. We don't see a brief yet. That's because Trump, under ordinary New York civil procedure rules, has six months to, what, to do what's called perfecting the appeal. That's filing a brief, filing the trial record with the appellate court. And the other thing that we know right now is what we haven't seen. We haven't seen any indicia of an undertaking or a bond that Trump and his co-defendants have posted in the amount of the underlying award. You heard that right, guys. $454 million and the interest is piling up with more than $100,000 per day. I mean, can you believe that? His supporters are definitely praying that President Trump will have victory in the courts and that this major ruling will be overturned in the President Trump's favor. Now, a lot of people are definitely speculating about how this is all a way to slow him down and maybe even get him off of the ballot for the November 2024 presidential election. Now, are we going to let this happen? Let me know your thoughts, guys. Now, let's talk about this appeal and how much Trump Trump could lose over it. So the latest is that Trump's lawyers have already filed an appeal at the appellate court in New York to overturn Judge Arthur Engernon's decision to slam the former president with an initial $355 million fine for inflating the value of his assets in financial documents. Due to added interest, the fine has now increased to nearly $454 million and will continue to rise by $112,000 per day until Trump pays up. Now, according to the reports, Trump's lawyers stated in the filing that they want the appellate court to, to consider whether Engernon, the judge, committed errors of law and or fact, and if he acted in excess of his powers as a judge in New York. Now, if the ruling is eventually upheld, Trump's fortune is expected to suffer a massive hit, as he may be required to sell off some assets just to be able to pay off the fine. The former president has until March 25th to secure a stay of halt enforcement of the judgment, or he risks his assets being seized by the New York Attorney General office. We're not sure if he's done so already or is in the process of getting one. But hey, don't count him out just yet. There's still a chance that this whole thing could just get kicked up to higher courts for another round of appeals, this time at the courts of appeals, the state's highest court. Trump will have his day in court, and many people are saying that any honest justice system would never allow this kind of unjust BS to happen to any American citizen. Trump himself called Judge Engernon's ruling un-American. At the time, he also slammed Engeron and the New York Attorney General's office led by Letitia James. He claimed that Engeron was crooked and described James as corrupt, adding that the ruling was a case of election interference and witch hunting. One thing's for sure, New York Attorney General Letitia James is certainly out for blood in this one. She's already told reporters how she's prepared to seize Trump's assets if he's unable to raise money to pay this fine. Now, according to her, she's looking at 40 Wall Street, Trump's building in New York, each and every single day. On the other side, we have people like Elena Cardone, wife of real
real estate billionaire Grant Cardone. She started a GoFundMe for Trump's fine, and it's reached almost $1.3 million when I last checked. It had a total of 22.6 thousand contributions from people. Calls for it to be shut down were made, but GoFundMe said in a statement that the fundraiser is currently within our terms of service. According to Elena Cardone, the money raised won't be used for anything other than what it was intended for. Every dollar will be used to cover fines related to the New York civil fraud case, its appeal, and any related expenses. Grant Cardone himself warns how he's going to be immediately discontinuing working in New York City over the Trump verdict. For him, when that ruling happened, it was like pencils down. Don't touch it. Don't go there. He also posted on his Twitter that his firm would be immediately discontinuing all underwriting on New York City real estate to focus on other markets like Texas and Florida. He said that they invest for 14,000 investors at Cardone Capital that depend on cash flow. And if they can't predict cash flow because of some ruling or because of the migrant crisis or because they can't evict people, New York City just keeps doing every single thing that they can do to sell real estate in Florida, not sell real estate in New York. With Cardone is O'Leary's Ventures chief and Shark Tank's Mr. Wonderful, Kevin O'Leary, who also echoed very similar concerns saying New York was already a loser state like California is a loser state. He called them loser states because of policy, high taxes on competitive regulation. So O'Leary promises to never invest in New York now. And that's not the only person that's saying that. Cardone cautioned of business ripple effects and that no one in real estate will probably want to put any kind of big money in New York anytime soon because of this. My uncle, I've told you guys about him, right? He says that it's in his humble opinion that he does not think that our country will survive if Trump does not become president in 2024. Because according to my uncle, if Trump actually loses, given his credible numbers in the polls, it will be a clear signal to all grassroots Republicans that we no longer live in a law-abiding democratic constitutional republic. And at that point, my uncle promises that he's personally going to be looking to move to another country. But what do you guys think? Let me know what you think about all this. And we're not done yet with this video, but while I give you a moment to compose your thoughts. I'd also like to give you guys a big thanks for always watching these videos and an even bigger thanks for lighting up the like button. I totally appreciate that. And I cannot thank you guys enough for subscribing and sharing these videos. You are the best. All right. So like I mentioned earlier, this fine, it's no joke. The amount was $355 million before interest when it was first handed out, but the amount has soared with interest, which will keep accruing by at least $112,000 per day. So Judge Arthur Engeron, he also banned the former U.S. president from doing business in the state for three years. The case also targeted Trump's family and the Trump organization. Engeron ruled that Trump and defendants were liable for persistent and repeated fraud, falsifying business records, issuing false financial statements, conspiracy to falsify false financial statements, insurance fraud, and even conspiracy to commit insurance fraud. The judge went on to criticize Trump's behavior during the trial, saying that he rarely responded to the questions asked, and he frequently interjected long, irrelevant speeches on issues far beyond the scope of the trial. According to Engeron, Trump's refusal to answer the questions directly, or in some cases, at all, severely compromised his own credibility. So according to Trump, Engeron ruled against him without even knowing anything about him. He called Trump a fraud, and he didn't know anything about Trump. Trump calls it a political witch hunt, especially since this appeal from the Republican president frontrunner means yet another legal case of his will drag further into the election season as he prepares for a likely rematch against Democratic President Joe Biden in November. But what do you guys think? And let's not forget, this is on top of all of his other recent court cases. Cases. One's for $83 million after losing a defamation case to E. Jean Carroll, a woman he was found to have sexually abused. In May 2023, he also lost a lawsuit against the New York Times and was ordered to pay the legal expenses of the reporters he had sued. One of the reporters involved in the case, Suzanne Craig, confirmed that Trump had completed the mandated $392,600 payment. He faces yet another case in his hometown of New York City for allegedly falsifying business records to conceal hush money paid to an adult film star before the 2016 election. So just a few days back, the Trumps decided to take the next steps and filed an appeal with the court. It's hot off the press since Judge Arthur Engeron just made everything official. Now, Donald Trump finds himself staring at a bill of $454 million 
dollars, including interest payments. Now, in their filing, their legal team mentioned that they're contesting not just the money judgment, but also other penalties like the ban on Trump's serving as officers in New York corporations for some years. They're bringing up whether the judge committed errors of law and or fact, abused his discretion and or acted in excess of its jurisdiction. So they're basically questioning if the judge messed up on the law or the facts or if they went a little bit overboard with their powers. And we're not quite sure how Trump plans on covering the cash needed for this appeal. I mean, we are talking some serious dough here. He's got to put up cash or post bond to cover the $355 million and an additional roughly $100 million in interest that he was ordered to pay. His sons were each ordered to pay more than $4 million back in gains that they improperly received because of fraud. So according to Jeremy Saland, a criminal defense attorney, if he does not provide all of these dollars, then the interest is going to keep ticking up through the entirety of the case. And trust me, that's not something that you want. The way that Salan puts it, Trump doesn't have to put up the money to appeal. He puts up the money to stop bleeding more money. Now, the way to cover the wound is with cash. Interest keeps racking up at 9% per year or more than $100,000 per day, according to estimates, until the bill settled. Now, if Trump puts up a bond, which could be backed by his properties or other assets, it'll stop the attorney general from seizing his property. Another option for Trump is to ask the appeals court to hold off on collecting the money until later. But let's be real guys. This is not your typical situation. Usually it's companies facing these jaw-dropping judgments, not individuals like Trump. It's kind of uncharted waters here and it's definitely got a lot of people asking questions about why they're doing this to Trump. The Trump organization is a private entity and much about its financial state is closely guarded. Last year, he swore under oath that he had over $400 million in excess cash. If Trump decides to sell off some property to raise funds, it could take months. Plus, he'd also need approval from the monitor overseeing the investigation and the attorney general. Oh, and don't forget about the huge tax bill that's likely to come with it. But hey, let's entertain the idea that Trump's appeal actually works or the court decides he doesn't have to pay as much. In that case, he'd be able to get some of that money back that he's shelling out now. So fingers crossed for him. But let me know what you guys think about all this. Drop your thoughts down below as we wish the best for Trump in these appeals. Man, it's gotta be a stressful night for him every night. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, tap the notification bell so that you don't miss out on our future updates. I'm gonna keep them coming to you guys fast for sure. I'll see you on the next one.